In this second episode about how to move mouse and keyboard over in Ethernet to a destination endpoint, I don't want to use a keyboard and a mouse and just move that. That's what I did in the first video where these devices were converted into raw panel devices and then moved over to my endpoint server, which is a TCP link for ATEM with a special firmware loaded onto it. And that is all documented in this wiki article right here. So in this article, I'm basically going through these. And the first chapter of the video was using X panel hits as a server for mouse and keyboard. And now we have come to using Reactor and Core Skyhoy Raw Panel to do the same. So we basically put out the keyboard and mouse and then we emulate it from a PC view. This is the PC view. And I want to set it up with a custom configuration so we can basically assign our buttons to whatever we want. Then I want to add a device which is a, uh, let's just search raw panel, raw panel server. This is the one you'll select. There we go. And now um, if we are smart, um, we will pick the port 63 because we are already using 63 on our little client that is connected to my computer here. If you watched the previous video, you know what that means. Now, uh, by doing so, we also need to make sure that we type in the variant. And this is the important bit that is also documented in this article, that when you do this, this generic keyboard has to be the label that you're inserting here if you want to emulate a keyboard. So let's just copy that over and type it in here because that's what the endpoint will be using to identify this as actually a uh, keyboard. So if we uh, now finally look at the firmware updater from uh, Skyhoy, then uh, let's just reset here for a moment and you will see that the device uh, announces it IP address and subnet mask. This is all great. Then you can see it's trying to uh, connect to two servers, server one and two, and the one is uh, 63 and then 64. And for 63, it just connected and it found XP core generic keyboard. That is exactly what we just set up in here. Notice if you read what it says, it says that if you do not choose any embedded topology up here, this becomes the variant that of the model key XP underscore core underscore variant, that thing. And that was used by the firmware updater or by the firmware here to detect it as a keyboard. So this tells me that things are fine for server one, but things are not fine for server two. And in this particular case, we don't need server two. So we need to disable that. This is important because if you don't, you'll get laggy behavior on the side of this application. So I just typed in the command that would re uh, disable server two. And this will be clear from the serial monitor as we now reset device because you can see now server two is not enabled. All right, we are basically back now. Um, yes. Uh, oh, actually, I have a little test that uh, that we can run. If if we go back here in, um, yes, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that was supposed to be a test button. Ah, that's not. Ah, yeah, that's a different application. Sorry, forget about it. Now let's move on to configuration because um, if I go to my PDC view, I want to set these buttons up to do a few things. Um, first button could be just. If you go into raw panel server button action and then you say I want to emulate a particular button uh, hardware component and now I choose four and that was a wise choice because I want to to basically draw an A. So um, let me see if we it's useful to go back here and then it might also I can place the cursor down there and now if I press A on my keyboard. Ah, no, 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 no. I was confused. Now if I press that button on my PDC view you'll see that it is, oh, I held it too long. Okay, it is every time I press sending hardware component four up, down, up, down, up, and that corresponds is translated into an A on uh, my, my input here because it is currently connected to my computer. So this is why you see A's is being drawn. Okay, so uh, how did I know it was um, that that was an A. Well, this is something that you look up on a graphic, which is included here. If you click this graphic, then you have like an overview of the numbers. These are the hardware components that you can, um, that is correlated with the key numbers on a keyboard. So you can use this basically to do that. And the next thing I want to do, uh, yeah. So for instance, if you wanted to do like a function key thing and uh, for function key, let's, let's press some function key on my Mac here. Um, no, wait, uh, I think I want to avoid function keys because I'm not sure I can demonstrate the uh, actual 
uh, reception on the other end. But um, you you sh you would simply do the same. If you wanted to have an F5, you just type in 62. But what I want to do now is to do a copy paste action. And um, I can, therefore, I need on a Mac to use this uh, left GUI uh, button. Uh, that's the same as command on Mac, which is use command C, command V for copy paste. And that is the number I need to remember, 259 and then six and 25. All right, but I can always go back to that graphic. Now, if I, um, first of all, actually, I'm a little bit discouraged that I don't see anything here. And um, quickly, I just uh, go in and add a text line and then uh, type in like letter A. Okay, just so we have a reference for that. Now, let's click on this one. And um, what we are going to do now is something more advanced. It's gonna look a little clunky and so on, but it's this is just how it is. Anyway, work with me, please. We create an empty behavior. And uh, we create a new event handler for shortcut, we'll call that. We will open this event handler. We'll create the type to be binary. Um, the binary type, yeah, okay, we don't need to set that. The edge filter is also not necessary. The set mode is a sequence. We want to create a sequence. We want to add a step to that sequence. And now we will choose device core. We'll choose raw panel server. And we will find um, like binary. And then we don't need any edge, but we need like the, was it six? I think it was, sorry, six was for C. We can go back and check the graphic here. Yes, six was the number for the key C. So I'll submit that one, okay? So I created one step now that basically sends the down trigger and I need to type in true as the value I'm setting because um, <clears throat> the binary, parameter for this device call will that their true corresponds to pressing down but now what i need to do is to just like add a second step and then i will on that step release it again because i'm responsible for doing both okay uh, now once again i find binary i mean if you want to see the parameter list of this device call which is emulating raw panel compliant devices then you can open this one up and then you can see what it what binary means in here and those meta values are available for you to to study uh typing in six once again and again with uh, that dimension six in mind i want to release it so i type in false so true down false release and then i want to put in like 10 milliseconds in between Okay, so what I've done now with this one is to just press the C button. And, um, but actually what I need to do is to hold down the GUI button first before I do this. So I'll have to modify it, but let's just do one step at a time. And then I will also uh, maybe make a title here. Um, uh, shortcut, I'll just type that in for this. And then for the text line, I'll type in copy, okay? Okay, so we know what that this is what the, the button actually is supposed to do. I am sort of ready. Let's uh, go back here. It's kind of nice to see what arrives. So I press it and um, you see every time I press it, it's actually doing both. It's doing the down and the up in one. I, there's nothing happening when I release it again, uh, which is okay because I just want to trigger it and it's going to make this copy paste, but it's making a C so we know this far, um, so good so far, or so far so good. And now if I go back to the event handlers, basically what I need to do is to, let's just modify this one. Um, instead of six, we are going to use 259 because that is the key here. Yes, and then, uh, so submit. And then on, on this one, we are going to, um, let me see. Actually, I think I wanna show you how to do this in the JSON code instead because um, yeah, we are advanced already. Um, but the binary sequence is these. And for me, it gives me a better overview to, to look at it here. So I would be much more comfort, comfortable to just quickly edit it here by setting the hardware component value to then 259, then six, true, then I need to release it again. So false down here. And then I'm just gonna copy this. 
Now notice, anytime you see a little wavy line, it means you have made a mistake. I need to put in a comma right there, and there cannot be a comma there, so this is something to keep in mind. Um, so 259 right here. Okay, save. Okay, let's just check what we have in the paste buffer. Now I'm copying this one, and I'm placing my cursor here, and I'm pasting. Okay, I'm pasting hello, we know that. So if I mark this, and I press copy, and I go over here, and I paste, you see it have copied hello world. Now, copy is working. And I can also see it in the serial monitor here. If I press this down, you see it's a combination of these in that sequence with 10 milliseconds in between, all right? So I just made a two key shortcut that is associated with a button on my PDC view. To kind of complete it, I want the button next to it to be paste action, okay? so. I could basically copy this one and then paste it over here. And I would now open this one up. Uh, actually, again, we already entered into the JSON code. So let's just quickly modify it in here. First of all, my label, I can change to paste. And then for the key, which is now supposed to be a V, so that's 25. We'll just change that from that to 25. And I basically have my paste button now, so I'll just save. It is changed to paste. I can do copy paste. Let's just quickly check if that is actually working. So um, it's to make sure that we we copy this copy and then paste 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 paste. And we can see the paste action. Yeah, now it's pasting it in down here. Once again, I need to be careful because I am actually working on my system there, paste, 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 for as many time as I press. Great, that basically showed that potential of using uh, constructing complex key combinations in Reactor. It's going to be a little bit messy in many ways. As you saw, I needed to enter into the JSON code to like really overview this, but it is all possible to do through the UI. Um, Anyway, I hope this inspired you and gave you some idea about the flexibilities that you can achieve in this way. And uh, just write to us if you have any, any questions or proposals for how this can be even more useful.